All right, it's time now for the press review. And for that, Solange Mougin is here with us. Solange, you're starting with the French press and anticipation, perhaps anxious anticipation, over a nationwide strike that's been called for this Thursday over pension reforms. Yeah, the January 19th strike is expected to be a big one with all uh, eight of the major uh, uh, labor unions joining forces. L'Humanité tells us that this is the first time in 13 years that they have all decided together to push back against the government uh, and its pension reforms. Now, for the left-leaning paper, quote, the French are not duped by the reform, which it says it's that people see as a threat and a major step backwards. But for the conservative paper, Le Figaro, uh, what's at play here is the unions trying to get their influence back. Uh, the paper says that unions are not what they once were, and uh, they're putting their credibility on the line with this strike. The paper says that the unions want to prove to the executive that they are an unavoidable force to be reckoned with. Meanwhile, Libération is testing the, the national pulse with a number of interviews of everyday citizens. Their concerns vary from fearing that they won't be able to enjoy their old age or, or on the other end, work past 64. Many are not convinced that the reform is really necessary. Now, Libération's cartoonist Coco has a bit of a fun cartoon on this. <clears throat> she says, ça va chauffer. Uh, she draws the, uh, the parallel between the government saying we need to heat our homes to 19 degrees only uh, and that on the 19th, ça va chauffer or it will get heated in the streets. So, Solange, we'll stay here in France for this next story. There's debate growing on now about the actual streets of Paris and specifically how they're being shared. Yeah, the mayor of Paris has decided to call a referendum on four higher scooters. Uh, she told Le Parisien uh, that she'll let them decide, she'll let Parisians decide on April 2nd by voting in post offices whether or not the free-floating scooters by companies uh, Do Lime, Dot, and Tears should have, whether they should have their rental contracts renewed. Now, this weekend, she told the paper in an exclusive that uh, the feedback over the companies was rather negative. Uh, uh, namely in regard to how the scooters are left on sidewalks, uh, that users don't respect uh, road rules. But again, the referendum is only for four higher scooters, people who have their own private uh, scooters, or the trottinette, for their own uh, use as uh, transport, are not involved in this referendum. So many of the complaints, benefits and risks, they may remain regardless of the vote. Switching gears entirely then now, Solange, you found some articles about the mass kidnapping in Burkina Faso over the weekend. Yeah, this is a heartbreaking story. Suspected jihadists, uh, they uh, are thought to have kidnapped uh, some 50 women. Uh, many, The Guardian tells us, were picking fruit because there is nothing left to eat. Um, uh, this happened when they were picking fruit when the attack occurred. Now, for Le Pays, the Burkina Bay paper, uh, it is another thorn in the, the junta side, or as they say here, a stone in Ibrahim Traoré's shoe. As the Burkina Bay puts it, it says that he promised to stomp out violence and has not managed it. Now, the mass killing is a reminder, according to Le, the Jelly, the Guinean paper, uh, that the what Burkina Bay forces are facing or the regular attack attacks by jihadist groups, uh, and it shows, the paper says, how desperate the population is for food as well, um, as it has become scarce because of the violence. It is time, uh, it says, uh, for all of this to stop. All right, Solange changing years again then. Today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day in the United States, and the American press is focusing in different ways on the civil rights leader. Yeah, and in an aptly timed article, because uh, Davos begins today and because Loxham has just re released its uh, wealth inequality report, a New York Times opinion writer is focusing on MLK's view of wealth inequality. He writes how in the preacher's final sermon, he called for people to wake up to injustice, uh, to the injustice around them, and to call for change, namely in regard to generational poverty, that injustice essentially leaves a legacy and that that needs to be repaired. Now, the U.S. press is also talking about MLK on a completely different subject. Uh, the Washington Post cartoonist Antelnis has a statue of the civil rights leader uh, looking at the Capitol uh, uh, and saying, uh, and now for the nightmare, referring here to the fact that the Republicans, and include that includes some of the fringe groups within them, are now in control of Congress. And then there is another subject in regard to MLK. That's the hubbub over a statue entitled The Embrace 
race that was unveiled in Boston. Um, uh, it inspi it's inspired by a hug that Martin Luther King gave to his wife uh, for the Boston Herald uh, and those that, they were, that were at the unveiling. It was about love. Uh, but some other people see other things. The New York Post tells us that one family member says that it looks like a, quote, masturbatory medal homage and a, quote, $10 million joke created by wokeism certainly hard to please everyone with statues. Solange, well, finally from you then, you found a few articles to bring us down, but also bring us up. Yeah, today is officially Blue Monday, or the most depressing day of the year. This is according to the Huffington Post. Now, what is Blue Monday? Well, the Financial Times explains that it was a term coined in the 2000s by a psychologist who actually gathered data on divorce filings, on the weather, and on consumer reports. But he now has denounced his research, and science and statisticians have also shown it to be untrue. Uh, live science explains to us that that uh, the post-holiday blues do exist, but today is not more statistically depressing than others. There are more clinically depressed people today than other days. But if you are feeling the winter blues, the Washington Post has an article for us. It explains that it's time for a laughing session, uh, that there is proof now that laughter uh, is actually contagious. It does decrease uh, depression and anxiety. But what science does not know yet, the Washington Post explains, is how we learn to laugh. Solange Moujan with the Press Review. Thank you very much.